I don't know. What was the question again? <laughs> For the past several weeks, we've been talking about the Earth's orbit around the Sun and the Moon's orbit around the Earth, and how all of that adds up to the calendar that we, in most of the world, use today. Now let's compare that to Mars's calendar, and how it goes around the Sun, and even how its two moons, Phobos and Deimos, orbit Mars. And from that, we'll talk about why Mars has a calendar that it does. So as usual, I went out into Savannah, Georgia, and I asked some people some questions. The first of which is how many days are in one Martian year? How long is a year on Mars? Oh, goodness. I have no we idea. We need our daughter here. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's shorter, right? Is Mars is outside of... Oh, it's outside space. of... Uh, it's longer than... More, so 542. <laughs> so we're 365 days. I think it's less than 400. The, I don't know, the equivalent of three Earth years. Or is it the other way? <laughs> no, I, th I, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be at least double. So I'm going to say 700. 677 days. Really close. 686 Earth days. That's or pretty close. 669 Mars days. That's pretty good. If you're counting by Earth days, Mars has 686.98 days in its year. But if you're counting by Martian days, it actually goes down to 668.599 days. So Mars takes just about 45 minutes longer to orbit on its axis one time as compared to Earth. One Martian year actually adds up to about 1.88 Earth years. So if you started counting Mars year on January 1st here on Earth, it would be November 17th of the following year before Mars completed one orbit. In fact, Mars's orbit is so long that you would celebrate two birthdays and almost reach a third birthday before Mars completes a single orbit. Now remember how here on Earth, our seasons are roughly the same length, but if you saw the previous video in which I talked about why the sun rises and sets at a different time every day, you would know that in fact, between the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere, there's about a week difference in the lengths of the two summers. On Mars, this is absolutely not the case. Mars's orbit is more elliptical than Earth's, so its summers and winters are a lot longer and a lot shorter than you would find on Earth. But on Mars, the Northern Hemisphere has a combined spring and summer of 372 days, whereas the Southern Hemisphere has a combined spring and summer of only 296 days. That makes the difference in the lengths between the two summers just about 80 days. Moving on to the second question, I asked people how many months they thought were on Mars. And I don't even know how months are calculated here, so... <laughs> How many moons? It has two moons. It has two. Uh, well, then that really gets weird. <laughs> right. Uh, I would say just a few. Hey, what would you say? I'd say like 17. I was going to say 17. You were? Yeah, 17. Okay, 17. We're going with 17. 20? I'll go with this answer. I'm going to say 24 months. 24 I'm really months. guessing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it would be the orbit of Mars around the sun would take. 23 months. Guess one, Katie. Nope. <laughs> it's actually zero. Oh. What? There's zero. no moons. There's That's a trick question. Months. Mars doesn't have months. Oh, oh. Well, that was a, a trick question. question. <laughs> In order to fully understand why Mars doesn't have months, we have to understand why Earth has months. In my previous video, we talked about how we measure two types of orbits for the Moon. The first is the sidereal orbit, which is when the Moon follows a 360 degree orbit around the Earth. The second is a synodic orbit, in which the Moon goes around the Earth, but is counted from full Moon to full Moon. The synodic orbit is a bit longer than the sidereal orbit by just about 2.2 days. And it's this synodic orbit from full Moon to full Moon that we get our months. So let's take a look at Mars and focus on this same definition. Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. Phobos orbits Mars at about 3,700 miles above its surface, whereas Deimos orbits Mars at just about 12,400 miles above its surface. Due to Phobos' proximity, it only takes about seven hours and 39 minutes for it to orbit Mars once, whereas Deimos takes just over one Martian day at around 30 hours. It takes Phobos, which is closer, it's about 3,000 miles off Mars, seven and a half hours to go around Mars. Wow. Oh, wow. It takes Deimos, which is about 13,000 miles, 30 hours to go around Mars. Wow, okay. There's no regular cycle for us to make a clock out of the moons, just like we do with Earth's moon. So instead of there being months, 
we actually only count the number of days since you yourself landed on Mars. There are no calendar dates on Mars. There's no April 17th. There's no November 3rd. Martian days are measured by souls, which is just like Earth's day, except measured as a Martian day. And it's usually scaled down to just 24 hours like we do here on Earth. But because there's no divided calendar yet, we only count by soul one, soul two, soul three, soul 400, soul 500, however many souls a rover or a person is on Mars. So until people start developing a society on Mars, we might not see a calendar arise for several decades. Maybe months will just be divided incrementally just without a pattern of the moon. Maybe there will be some calculation of the factors between Phobos and Deimos and match them up, and every so often that'll just end a month. But people are working on it, especially since in the next 10 to 20 years, people will be living on Mars. So that's how Earth and Mars' calendars stack up to each other. Earth has 365 Earth days and is based on 12-month calendar from the synodic orbit of the moon. Mars has 668.599 Martian days, and doesn't have months because there's no regular cycle of moons. Awesome. Well, thank you very Thanks, much. man. So you have, oh, okay. Hmm. So it's I'm a, learning. <laughs> That's really cool, but also scary. That's everything. Yay. Alrighty. Oh, yeah. very cool. Yeah, I can see how yeah. that would That's be. That's yeah. pretty yeah. cool. That's all I have for you this week, so tune in next Wednesday when I present the video collage that I've created from a collaboration of scientists from around the world to talk about how they connect with nature. This video collage will be presented at the European Congress for Conservation Biology of 2018 over in Yavaska, Finland, which is taking place between June 12th and June 15th. I'll be there for just about two weeks, and this is actually the first time I've ever traveled overseas, so I am looking forward to this. You can keep up with my travels and the conference and everything happening here behind the scenes if you just go to my Instagram at the Scalix of Science or my Twitter at the Scalix. And don't forget, you can support me on Patreon, and for a donation as little as $2 a month will help me get supplies, be able to travel more. So take a look into that and consider it, and all the help would be appreciated. My next regular SciComm video will be on May 30th, and then I'll figure out what I'm gonna be doing while I'm in Finland for two weeks. As always, like and share this video, and be sure to subscribe to my channel over here. I have a lot of new content and videos planned for this summer, especially out here taking place across Savannah. One of those will be a certain scale of the solar system, where we are comparing the distances between the Earth and the Moon, and the Earth and Mars even. How big the Sun is compared to all of those, and just some interesting facts about the solar system. That will be taking place downtown Savannah sometime later this summer. So keep updated and stay tuned, and as always, here's to all your endeavors.